appreciate that. I never learned to smoke, by the way, so I'm at a loss. I'm up the creek. Thank you. We want to be for us who have fallen asleep in the name of the Lord. And so at this time, we'll start our little memorial service. And if um, you know of someone that has passed and you have not told us, uh, come up and give us the name now. Okay, not seeing or hearing anybody. We'll ask Nicole. Yes. Okay, just a moment. Bussy is how we're connected, and Mary Emma. So I forgot that. And then the next was we're residing in Illinois, and we're from Detroit. Me and my husband Wayne. And the next is we're filming and selling DVDs of the family reunion. So we're taking names. And the last is we've been married eight years, going on nine in March. And we're planning on having a, a 10 year reunion, hopefully, party coming in March 30th in 2008. And we've been knowing each other since the fifth grade. We've been in school together since fifth grade, 1982. And like I said, we've been married eight years, eight and a half years. Okay. So thank you. Sorry about that. How much the videos? Oh, yeah. The videos so far, we, we're planning on charging $20. And he's a very good editor, filmer, everything. He's been doing video, videography, filming since he was a little one. What, fifth, third, third grade? Back in 1984. 1984. So he's pretty good, pretty good at his craft. Well, and he loves it, so he really means it, to put a lot into it. You'll see. You'll see. Let me get him. What's the process for getting the DVD? The process of creating a DVD is... Getting it. No, getting oh, getting get it. the names. Oh, I have books. Right here, and I'm writing names. Okay. Anyone wants to give me their name? Okay. And their, I need their names, address, phone numbers, and then yeah, we'll be sending it all to you ourselves. So that's what we have to charge because we have to mail it okay. and make the DVDs and so forth. All right. Okay. <coughs> I will be reading from, I think it's a King James Bible. Yeah. Well, at least I know it's, it's, a, it's got scripture from King James, but it's an African um, pictures in here. Or African Americans descent. I don't know if they're African or not, but anyhow, I'm reading from 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 9, verses 1 through 9. And it's a hymn to love. Chapter 13 out of 1 Corinthians, number verse 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity, I am I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could not so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. Amen. Oh, that's love. Charity's love. Okay. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned. I have not charity, I, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long, and is kind. Charity envieth not, charity vaunteth not, not itself, is not puffed up, 
doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in inequity, but rejoiceth in truth, bear of all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. Our song will be Blessed Assurance. start with the table here and go to the next table and on around please. King. Blanche. King. King. Yes. Okay, would Blanche's family stand? Thank you. The next table. Mm -hmm. Wayne and Nicole Perry. Wayne, Wayne and Nicole's daughter. And what was her name? Ramona Tamla Perry. Ramona Tamla Perry. Connie? Okay. This table. Lucille Farrell. My aunt. My mother's sister. Everybody in the family of Lucille Farrell, including me, stand. Thank you. And the next table. Irvin McDaniel, Maria Harris. His father, Irvin McDaniel, Mariah Harris, and Renard Jones, his nephew. Mariah was your sister. Right. Okay. Anyone else at that table? Okay. Come forward. But come as a little over five years, but I, I'm here and I just know that um, it's my father and uh, he was a wonderful man and I know his spirit is with us here today and I know he would so much appreciate each and every one of us that came out uh, to celebrate uh, 
on this joyous occasion, and his name is Herbert Kemp Sr. Would everybody in the family of Herbert Kemp Sr. stand? All right. Thank you. And the table with, yes. Uh, my baby girl, Alberta Lakeisha Lanham, uh, she passed 2001. Okay. All right. And that would be the family that just stood. And of course, everybody have our condolences. We certainly, you know, want to offer our condolences. But the next table where Patrick is, yes. Yes, please. Helen Kemp. Okay. And that's the family that just stood. So stand again. With that many people pass and stand up again. Well, we certainly honor the memory. Okay. Patrick, is there someone at your table? Oh, uh, Randolph Hampton. Okay, Cal Hampton. And I want to say just a moment that Cal Hampton and his wife, Dorotha uh, DeVore Hampton, were very kind to Val and I when we were children. And we visited their home many times. And my brother, Benny, said when he was on the farm, at our grandma's, he would have to take the corn or the cotton into town after grandpa died. And he was about 11 years old. It was about a 12 mile ride from the country to McCormick. And he said he could always count on a big platter of chicken at the DeRope and Cal Hampton's house. And he said that the children ate first at that house and he always had plenty of lunch to take on his way to McCormick or even back home to grandma's. So he and Lammy and Dora were my grandmama's grandchildren that was on the farm after William McDaniel passed my grandpa. Norbell Farrell McDaniel, no, Norbell McDaniel Farrell's family or vice versa. Okay, the next table here. Okay. Okay, it was their father, George and Solomon Hampton's father, that he mentioned to grandfather. Okay, and the next table, please. Joan Astor. Uh, uh, my brother, I really see things. My aunt, Ruth Harris, and my older brother, Thomas Fortune. Would everyone connected to the Strawkers family stand in memory of Willie C. and what was the other name? Uh, Okay, thank you. And at the next table, has someone passed? Okay. My sister Margie Lang. Margie Lang, and that would be Fred Strother's <coughs> granddaughter. Okay, and that and Kevin's sister. Viola, did you want to? Oh, yes, yes, we Strothers, okay. <laughs> All right, we McDaniels, okay. <laughs> Yes. Thank you very much. I think that we should honor them because they did so much before we came and then after we got here. Many of them instilled in us the pride that we have today, the ethics that we live by today, the Bible teachings that we live by today. My grandma would say, okay, everybody have to take the bath on this tin tub on Saturday night. She would heat this kettle, tea kettle of water. She had a big pan, and then she would cool it down with the well water, and we would take our bath in the tin tub. Then, Sunday morning, we would be dressed, our hair put in Shirley Temple curls, and then we would be off to Sunday school. Well, then she would come because she was bringing the, uh, the dinner in the <coughs> baskets, and then they would spread the food on the tables under the shade trees and she would feed everybody. As every, everyone at that church, they didn't go straight home. They would stay and have, I'll say, lunch after the service. So we would have to cross a field of cows and bulls. So we would say, oh, if you have on something red, you're gonna have to run fast because the bull is gonna be after you. <laughs> well, we didn't know if the bull was colorblind or what, but I think just because somebody was in the pasture disturbing the animals, um, they were excited. And so we would take off our shoes 
and we would carry in a paper bag, a wet cloth, 